Hey everyone, I'm John Lin, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. And we're here at the Health Data Palooza Conference in Washington, DC. And our guest is Mario Highland. He is the founder and senior vice president of Aegis. Welcome, Mario. Thank you, John. Very happy to be here, everyone. Yeah, so excited for this discussion. Uh, but before we dive into, you know, the, really the topic of this conference, but uh, tell us about yourself and Aegis. Thank you, John. Um, so my name is Mario Highland, and I've been around interoperability since the early 2000s. And specifically, we want to try to help people understand that interoperability is not something you can buy and not something you can sell. What we want people to understand is we arrive at interoperability when we as a community can exchange information seamlessly. And I want people to understand that the interoperability that we're talking about today is point in time interoperability. So as we go on, I'll tell you the difference. Yeah, very interesting. Well, so what are those biggest challenges that you see in the interoper interoperability space right now? So um, we have um, a lot of participation in the development of standards. Mm -hmm. We see consensus based across HL7's industry with, um, with standards like FHIR, um, the IHE community and the IHE profiles, HL7 all the way back to V2, it's been many years. Um, but standards and published standards are open to interpretation. <laughs> and that seems to be where the biggest issues come in with respect to interoperability. What we want to do is make sure that when we're implementing these standards, we can avoid those interpretation issues because ultimately they become barriers to interoperability. And we want organizations to realize that they need to test to ensure that they've implemented those standards correctly. And by testing, I don't mean one and done. I don't mean during initial development mm. that they should do some testing. I mean they should have continuous testing because what we're after is continuous interoperability. Interesting. Can you give a specific example where the interpretation of the standard, I, I like to call it flavors of standards, <laughs> you know, like the interpretation is different between one organization to another? So it, it's, uh, it, it's not intentional. Sure. Um, organizations uh, download public, public facing documents like standards all the time. Mm -hmm. And they review them, but the, but the challenge comes, they review them from their perspective, their experience. Whereas the standards may be written by very smart people like Graham Greaves and Lloyd McKenzie and, sure. and people who have been around the standards community. And while they do a very good job of ensuring everyone understands what they're after with respect to the requirements, it's still written through their perspective and their experience. Whereas in the standards that we have published in the past, the implementation community has been relatively small, small EHR groups. I say that 800 <laughs> an average here yeah. in the US. But what we see in the future with respect to fire, there will be tens of thousands of organizations implementing fire. We're not talking about 25 to 3,500 products. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of products. So this implementation, the, the, the part that's going on right now with respect to helping the industry understand how to implement these standards, this is 30% of the lift. This is publishing the standard, getting it out there. The 70% of the lift that's coming is the implementation community, the wide industry adoption. That's when we'll arrive at interoperability. We want to make it easy. We want to make it fast. Mm -hmm. We heard from people earlier um, in the conference talking here. Um, somebody from the FDA, as an example, was, was talking about how they want to see faster. They want to see implementations faster. They want to see, because. CMS and other sponsors of these specifications are not giving high fives <laughs> when the standards are published. Mm -hmm. Their ROI is when those standards are being used. Mm. And that's where we're seeing, we want to make sure that the industry is ready to implement and get implemented as fast as possible. Yeah, that's a great example. So we are here at Health Data Palooza. What are you hearing at the conference? What are you hearing from attendees? So. It's data palooza. Everybody's talking about data. It's all the data. Uh, yes, the data. So we want uh, we want the, we want to improve the quality of the data. We want access to the data. 
We want the patient empowered to be able to control how that information is being shared. And, and right now, we still need to work on the quality of the data. We still need to work on access. Um, we don't just simply want data in EHRs to be exported, like bulk patient and, and all these, you're gonna hear these different terms, it's not just about getting information out of the EHR. It's actually putting the patient in the center of the care continuum where we've got bi-directional, multi-organizational exchange of information. And all you have to do is look to CMS and their new NPRMs and the burden reduction and what we're doing with prior auth. This is pushing the envelope with the EHR vendors with respect to they're going to have to support patient information exchange bi-directionally across multiple organizations, including sharing with the patient. Wow, that's a big change. But you know, let's talk a little bit more about testing, right? You know, obviously, I know you're a huge fan, and, and you know, Aegis is built around this idea of making sure testing is done right. And, and to be frank, you know, here at the conference, you know, Mickey from ONC even announced some options for testing and encouraged some testing as well. But what would you say, you know, your, your platform, Touchstone, what makes it different than maybe some of the other testing options out there? Great question. So, um, so first and foremost, any testing that we do is good testing. <laughs> so I don't want to, there, there's a number of different testing applications out there and testing platforms, and I encourage people to, to test and continue to test. But some of the uniquenesses of what we're doing with Touchstone as a platform is we want to be able to test client and server implementations. Uh, okay. We want to test version awareness. We want organizations to be able to test as, as their own entity. So um, if we're in a development team, I run a test, I want you to be able to see the results. Um, I want to be able to have multiple testing servers. I want to be able to have uh, testing in development. I want to be able to have testing going on in QA, in integration, and then ultimately implementation when we go out on the client sites. Our clients are coming to us because they're not only testing internally with their own implementation, but they're actually testing their partners oh, to see how information. So Touchstone very much is about a community-based approach to testing, and it's global. We have over 64 countries testing with wow. us right now. Countries like the Netherlands and, uh, and Denmark have standardized on our approach to testing. Okay. We're very excited working with Ontario Health, and, and here in the US, we're supporting CMS, and HL7 with the DaVinci accelerators and the Karen Blue Button initiatives. And those tests have been calibrated by the industry and they allow everybody to collaborate. So, you know, we're very proud of Touchstone and what we're doing and we definitely see it moving forward. But, but, but where Touchstone is really gonna shine is when we get into the workflows. The future of testing around the context of a patient's point in care means that we've got to be able to see a patient go through an entire life cycle of an event where it's multi-organizational, exchanging information on that patient. That's what Touchstone was built to be able to do. Hmm. And I think the other problem that we've talked about in the past is uh, versioning, right? Like the fact that one EHR in one organization might be version X and the one over at this organization might be version Y, which might have different implementations of the standards, right? Is that yeah. is that part of the testing philosophy? Yes. Talk about that. So, so to, 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 to your audience and helping everyone understand, we're going to serve, we're going to uh, live in an integrated ecosystem mm -hmm. where different organizations have implemented different versions sure. of a product. And right now we're dealing with version four, R4 of Fire. Some countries have standardized on R3. Um, we're going to see R5, we're going to see R6. Mm -hmm. But even within a Fire standard, one of the things we do is we implement IGs. So whether you're talking about US Core, well, US Core and what we're talking about here at the conference, US CDI, Every version of US CDI generates a new version of US Core. <laughs> and, and we don't know, we hope that as US Core matures, as US CDI matures, that we don't introduce any breaking changes. And we don't see that right now, but what if? Mm -hmm. The products and the solutions and the technology we're rolling out need to be resilient so that if we have a moment like, ooh, We've learned something, we need to fix that. Sure. We shouldn't introduce breaking change that the environment 
can't handle. And right now we're worried because the client and the server's ability to introspect what each other are doing and whether they're conformant with each other, that's a question we haven't answered yet. We're working on that. We're working on that with CMS and, and FAST around versioning. You know, just stay tuned. But yeah. we need to be able to have an in integrated environment where we can test that. And we need to be able to test against versions to see how the actors respond. Yeah. Well, what a challenging problem. Uh, thanks so much for sharing these insights and perspectives. I think you gave us a new view on, on some of the needs to test uh, these new interoperability frameworks. So thanks so much. And thanks everyone for watching and listening. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcasting application. Thanks, Mario.